Romans chapter 9. We couldn't help being in apostasy and being ignorant, but proud Gnostic leaders will not give up denominationalism, John eleven forty eight. Still, all humanity will be as clay in the hands of the master as he readies both the wise and the foolish virgins for our fate. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience bearing witness with me in the Holy Spirit, that I have great sorrow and unceasing pain in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were anathema from Christ for my brethren's sake, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, whose is the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom is Christ as concerning the flesh, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. It is not as though the word of God has come to naught just because some Gnostics refuse to become Christians. For they are not all Israel that are of Israel. There are Gnostic Jews and there were religious Jews who were trying to do their best. Neither because they are Abraham's seed are they all children. But in Isaac shall your seed be called. That is, it is not the children of the flesh that are children of God. It's not Jewish people that are children of God. It would be Jew, the religious Jewish people. But the children of the promise are reckoned for a seed. For this is a word of promise. According to this season will I come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only so, but Rebekah also having conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born, neither having done anything good or bad, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calls. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. Even at his even as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I loved less. Now that we have, or now that we're working on the perfect law of liberty, evil or proud Gnostic denominationalists will be rejected. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? I mean, he made us be Gnostics, right? Well, God forbid. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. Again, he that we're predestined, he knows what decisions we're going to make beforehand. And so he's not unfair in any way. In any way, So then it is not of him that wills, nor of him that runs, but of God that has mercy. For the scripture says unto Pharaoh, For this very purpose did I raise you up, that I might show in you my power, and that my name might be published abroad in all the earth. God is long-suffering. He wants all men to be saved. He used Pharaoh to save men. He uses evil Gnostic men today. He will to save men. So then he has mercy on whom he will, and whom he will be hardened, he hardens. You will say unto me, you will say then unto me, why does he still find fault? For who can withstand his will? No, but O man, who are you that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why did you make me thus? Why did you make me a denominationalist? Or has not the potter right over the clay from the same lump to make one part a vessel unto honor and another to dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering vessels of wrath fitted unto destruction, that he might make known the riches of his glory upon vessels of mercy? In the kingdom, Ephesians 2, 7. Which he afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he also called, not from Jews only, but also from Gentiles. As he said also in Hosea 2, 23, I will call, I will call that my people which was not my people, and her beloved that was not beloved. And it shall be that in the place where it was said unto them, You are not my people, there shall they be called sons of the living God. And Isaiah 10, 22 cried concerning Israel. If the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, it is the remnant that shall be saved. For the Lord will execute his word upon the earth, finishing it and cutting it short. And as Isaiah has said before in Isaiah 1, 9, except the Lord of the Sabbath, that's the thousand year reign of the kingdom, the Lord's Sabbath is his thousand years that he rules over this earth. If he had left us a seed, we had become as Sodom and had been made like unto Gomorrah. 
What shall we say then? That the Gentiles who follow not after righteousness attain to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, following after a law of righteousness, did not arrive at that law. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by works, they stumbled at the stone of stumbling. They couldn't get over their own pride. Even as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion, and that's a hill in Jerusalem, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. So Jerusalem basically destroyed itself because they couldn't accept Christ as God. And he that believes on him, that believes in the power and the might and authority of Christ, believes in his one faith system of religion, and believes that the second age of the kingdom of heaven is at hand, Leviticus 10.3, they shall not be put to shame. Romans chapter 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and my supplication to God is for them that they may be saved. You know, the denominationalist Jews and denominationalist today, he wants all men to be saved. For I bear them witness that they have zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Okay, the denominational Jews had zeal. So much so they crucified Christ. And they tried to take his place, standing between God and men. Gnostic Jewish leaders today refuse to allow the reading of Isaiah 53 in their synagogue. And all who continue to refuse Christ as the anchor of their salvation will not find salvation. Just as the Gnostic Jews of Jerusalem waited for salvation in Jerusalem in 70 AD and they did not find it. For being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish our own but denominationalism, they did not subject themselves to the righteousness of a God. For Christ is the end of the law unto righteousness to everyone that believes. For Moses wrote, Leviticus 18.5, that the man that does the righteousness which is of the law shall live thereby. But the righteousness which is of faith said thus, Say not in your heart, Who shall ascend into heaven, that is, bring Christ down? Or who shall descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead? But what says it? The word is nigh you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of the one true faith which we preach. Because if you shall confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, if you believe in his power and his might and his kingdom, you shall be saved. If you believe and confess the power, majesty, and authority of Christ, and you humble yourselves as little children, if you obey him, you're going to be saved. You're going to find salvation. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto or toward salvation. And we're talking here about salvation that has now been brought down from heaven. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him shall not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all and is rich into all that call upon him. You know, God, all God wants is for men to sanctify and obey his word so that he can bless and protect us exceedingly. For whoever shall call on the name or the authority of the Lord shall be saved. Not only because of your heart, but because your actions, if you... If you take the steps he requires you to take, you're going to be safe. Now, there was never authority for denominationalism to give to the world the Bible. And, and we wouldn't be denominationalists if we'd been given a choice. We've been in the matrix, a strong delusion from God. And mostly, though we had some benefits in denominationalism, but mostly it was only beneficial to evil denominational leaders. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How could a denominational Jew who didn't believe in Christ call upon him for salvation? Well, he couldn't. And now that the rod of iron is back, how can proud Gnostic denominationalists who don't believe in the one true faith system from Christ find salvation. They can't, not if they continue in their pride. And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? Well, they haven't heard the gospel of the kingdom. And shall, how shall they hear without the preacher? That is Jesus, the preacher of the gospel of the kingdom, Matthew four twenty three. And how shall they teach except they are sent unless they are given wisdom from above to teach? James 1, 5, 3, 13 and following. Even as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that bring glad tidings of good things. 
but they did not all hearken to the glad tidings. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hearing the rod of iron, the perfect law of liberty, the Bible of the second age of the kingdom of heaven. That's how you get in the one faith system. That's how you obey God. But I say, did they not hear? Yes, amen. Their sound went into all the earth and their words into the end of the world. Now, denominationalists never had a commission from God. They didn't have the authority to teach the Bible or preach. I mean, we were in ignorance. 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 and 11. In a strong delusion. And we're forgiven because we were in ignorance and we didn't have a choice. Acts 17, 30. And so denominationalists never had a commission from God. But you do. And you can help us take the rod of iron to the world. But I say, did Israel not know? You know, when Jesus was born on the earth, there were some who believed and taught from the Hebrew Bible and who were waiting for the Messiah. But most were Gnostic Jews. So Israel knew. Remember Matthew 13, verse 10. God gave to those who he wanted to know and understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So when you're ready, if your heart's right, you will know. He that has an ear, let him hear. You'll know. First, Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy with that which is no nation. With a nation void of understanding will I anger you. And Isaiah, Isaiah 65 verse 1, is very bold and says, I was found of them that sought me not. I became manifest unto them that asked not of me. But as to Israel, he said, all the day long did I spread out my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Romans chapter 11. 144,000 Israelites from the 12 tribes were saved by the grace of Christ through immersion and later then entered into the kingdom of heaven. I say then, did God cast off his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God did cast off his people, which he foreknew. Or know ye not what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets, they have dug down your altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what says the answer of God to him? I have left for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so, then at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And so 7,000 in the time of Elijah, we don't know how many other Gnostic Jews there were at that time, and uh, 144,000 Israelites. How many, how many Gnostic Jews were left in Rome? That's a pretty good portion. And so now in the world today, there are perhaps billions who are righteous denominationalists who will be obedient uh, to the gospel of the kingdom. Even so, then at this present time, there also is a remnant according to the election of grace. Again perhaps more than a remnant today. But if it is by grace, it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. What then? That which Israel does seek after, this it did not obtain. And the chosen did obtain it, and the rest were hardened. According as it is written, God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear until this very day. We're in ignorance. We also were in, in the matrix, in the stupor. Until this very day, and, and, may, and maybe some of you will not be able to come out of this matrix for a while longer. God determines when we understand the will of the Lord. And David said, Let their table become a snare, and for a trap, and for a stumbling block, and for a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see, and bow you down their backs always. I say then, did they stumble that they might fall? God forbid. He didn't do this to them so that they would fall. He did do this to them so that salvation could come unto the Gentiles when the Gnostic Jews rejected to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if their fall is the riches of the world and their loss the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? But I speak to you that are Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am apostle of Gentiles. I glorify my ministry, if by any means I may provoke to jealousy them that are my flesh, and may save some of them.
So I think the application is a little bit different today. We are, we are Gentiles, and we are not Christians, but we are believers. And so this may apply to us in the sense today that he wants Gentiles now to become Christians. If they're not, he's going to allow other people who weren't even, who were not even believers to be a part of Christianity to provoke us to jealousy if we are believers and we refuse to repent of our denominationalism. For if the casting away of them is the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? And if the first part of the dough is holy, the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so then are the branches. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you being a wild olive was grafted in among them, and did become partaker with them of the root of the fatness of the olive tree, glory not over the branches. But if you glory, it is not you that bear the root, but the root you. You say then, branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well... By their unbelief they were broken off, and you stand by your faith, the one faith system given from God. Be not high-minded, but fear. Humble yourselves as little children before God. For if God spared not the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Behold, then, is the goodness and severity of God toward them that fail severity, but toward you, God's goodness, if you continue in his goodness. Again, if we humble ourselves and prepare ourselves for the second age of the kingdom of heaven. Otherwise, you also shall be cut off. And they also, if they continue not in their unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if you were cut out of that which is by nature a wild olive tree, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which are the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Again, all this happened before the kingdom of heaven. Once the kingdom, of course, once the kingdom of heaven comes, there's really not going to be a motive for people to fall away. For I would not, brethren, have you ignorant of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own conceits. That hardness, in part, has befallen Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. So even though denominationalism, it's a heresy, it's an, it it's also was an important part of the scheme of redemption. Even as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer. He shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As touching the gospel, this is the gospel of the kingdom, they are enemies. Denominationalists are enemies of the gospel of the kingdom. They have their own gospel, gospels of men, for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. It's God's plan. For the gift and the calling of God are not repented of. For as you in times past were disobedient to God, but now have obtained mercy by their disobedience, even so have these also now been disobedient, that by the mercy shown to you they also may now obtain mercy. For God has shut up all in disobedience. Now so the point here, I think for us, a practical application is the the proud Gnostics are not going to turn away from denominationalism first you know it may take them a while they may god wants to make them jealous so that they will give up their positions their places and positions in denominationalism and start preparing for the second age of the kingdom of heaven for god has shut up all in disobedience that he might have mercy on all he put us all in denominationalism so they can have mercy on all of us part of the scheme of redemption Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his way. And his ways past tracing out. For who has known the mind of God, or who has been his counselor, or who has first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him, and through him, and unto him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Romans chapter 12. Christian warfare is about being in the Lord's army and about showing the world what righteousness is. Now, we're not Christians yet. We don't understand the Word of God well enough to be born of the Spirit, the rod of iron of God. But we're getting there and we're preparing ourselves to be in the Lord's army. And in the Lord's army, then, we will fight and prepare ourselves for the second age of the kingdom of heaven. I beseech you, I beg you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now we're going to be in the Lord's army. There's no time anymore for messing around. We need to take this seriously. It's not just about us. 
It's about the salvation of the world. Things are going to change drastically in this world. We're going to mankind is going to be the best he's ever been, and we're part of it. You can't mess around. And be not fashioned according to this world with subjective truth that mankind has been under ever since the Garden of Eden when Eve looked at that fruit and she said, oh, it looks good. That's subjective truth. Man has been under subjective truth for 6,000 years of history. But now we're entering the second age of the kingdom of heaven, the last part of the thousand year reign of Christ where he has all authority and we have objective truth from God. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Humble yourselves as little children. Matthew 18, 3 and 4. And you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We can prove it. We're to contend for the faith. As we study the Bible, we're going to understand it. We're going to understand objective truth from God. The rod of iron. With the Bibles of men, we studied subjects and lessons that men picked out and men gave. Now we have the rod of iron, the Bible from God, and we cover all of God's Word, the subject He wants us to cover. And the time frame he wants us to cover it. And we ready ourselves and we ready the world for the second age of the kingdom of God. For I say, through the grace that was given me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. We're all just men. There is going to be no respect of persons in the second age of the kingdom. But to think soberly according as God has dealt to each man a measure of faith. For even as we have many members in one body, and all the members have not the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and severally members one of another. And we're not talking about just a congregation. We're talking about those of the same faith system around the world. We have different gifts and different abilities. We're to use them as one body to help each other. We love one another as ourselves, and we help each other, each of us having different gifts to help the body and to help each other. That's why if we seek first the kingdom of heaven, all these things will be added unto us because there's a lot of t there will be a lot of talented Christians and having gifts, miraculous at the time of this writing. We're not going to have miraculous gifts, but different gifts according to the grace that was given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy. We're not going to be prophesying. That was in the first century. According to the proportion of our faith. We don't have prophecy, yet we are granted wisdom from above at different times so that we can understand the rod of iron now that revelation is unhidden. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7. James 1, 5. And James 5, 13 and following. Our ministry. Let us give ourselves to ministry because it's not just about us, it's about the body. Or he that teaches to his teaching. Because it's not just about us, the teacher. It's serving everyone and teaching. Or he that encourages and strengthens to his encouraging and strengthening. He that gives, let him do it liberally. You see, we're going to change our minds about money. Money's not going to be just about me. It's going to be about the body and how we can help each other. He that takes the lead on leadership, we're going to have to change the way we think. Christ is our leader. We're to humble ourselves as little children. The more humble we are, the better we are at leading others. With diligence, he that shows mercy with cheerfulness, because we're being merciful to ourselves, to the body. Let love be without hypocrisy. Love the body. Love your neighbor as yourself, an enemy as ourselves, so we won't be hypocritical in the way we love them. Abhor that which is evil, subjective truth of men. Cleave to that which is good, objective truth from God. In fact, evil sin is not following the objective truth from God, the rod of iron. That's what sin is. It's missing the mark of following the rod of iron. In love of the brethren, be tenderly affectionate one toward another in honor. You know, we financially are supportive and encouraging of one another, preferring one another, in diligence, not slothful, fervent in spirit, going to be a great spiritual awakening. We're going to know more about spiritual matters than we ever even dreamed was possible. And we're going to be fervent. Remember in the Lord's army, and we're fighting spiritual warfare, getting ready for the second age of the kingdom of heaven, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. And you know, there's going to be less tribulation when the kingdom comes, but we have to be patient as we work toward that. Now, we needed to be patient in denominationalism, hoping and waiting for something better to come. Well, now it's coming. And now there's going to be tribulation with that in the Lord's army. Continuing steadfastly in prayer. We're going to learn how to pray in truth according to how the Spirit shows us in the rod of iron. Communicating 
to the necessities of the saint. That's going to, we're going to learn how to pray. We're going to learn how to communicate to the necessities of the saints. We're going to pray according to faith. We're going to know what people need and we're going to know what we need to pray for. Given to hospitality. It's not going to be different, difficult to be hospitable to the saints when the saints are hospitable to you. We're all on the same side. We're all here to help each other and to help the world. Bless them that persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. We all have the same faith system, not just congregationally, but around the world. Set not your mind on high things, but condescend to things that are lowly. Be not wise in your own conceits. Render to no man evil for evil. Take thoughts for things honorable in the sight of all men. Think about things before you do it. Think of the consequences. If it is possible, as far as in you is, be at peace with all men. Get along with people, if you can, especially leaders, if you can. Avenge not yourselves, beloved, but give place place unto the wrath of God. Remember when Jesus was arrested and Peter, right before Jesus was arrested, Peter cut off the ear of Malchus. And before that trip, Jesus told them they'd need swords. And yet not for offensive battle, for defensive, yes. We will need to be ready to defend ourselves, but don't go on the offensive. The only offensive weapon we use is the Bible, the rod of iron, to try to save men's souls. Avenge not yourself, beloved, but give place unto the wrath of God. See, God doesn't want us harming others. He wants us to try to help our fellow man. For it is written, vengeance belongs to me. I will recompense, says the Lord. But if your enemy hunger, denominationalists, I mean, denominationalists aren't our enemies, as are our brethren right now, right? But they can potentially be our enemies. If evil denominationalists, evil socialists, atheists, etc., if they're harming you, feed them. If they thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire upon his head. And that's doing a good thing. That's giving him coals when he needs them to light his fire. You're going to confuse him. When you do good to your enemy, when your enemy is trying to destroy you, you might get his attention. And you might want to study with you. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You're the light unto the world, a salt unto the earth, or you will be. So spiritual warfare is about showing evil men what righteousness is. If you don't show them, who will? The book of Romans, chapter 13. Understand the rules of engagement in Christian spiritual warfare. Rome fought against Jerusalem. Gnostic Rome fought against Gnostic Jerusalem. Then together they stood against the Lord. The Lord is in charge of Gnostic leaders. Has he chosen Joe Biden? No. Evil Gnostic men are trying to stand up against the will of the Lord. Will the Lord in the future select Gnostic leaders from the left? Likely, because he's balancing the power. All men are as clay in the Lord's hand, even Gnostic men, even evil Gnostic men. Romans chapter 13. Let every soul be in subjection to the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. Jesus came to give us freedom from every wind of the doctrine of men. Still, Gnostic leaders are going to have power over us for at least 40 years until the second age. And the powers that be, that is socialist Rome at that time, are ordained of God to be Christ's ministers, verse 4. Later, they would be destroyed by other socialist armies who marched against Rome in 96 AD. Remember, for 6,000 years, humanity has been in Gnosticism. Ever since Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they were guilty of Gnosticism, subjective truth of men, and the Lord kicked them out of the garden. So for 6,000 years, we have been subject to man. That's why Eve had to subject herself to her husband, because she chose not to subject herself to the Lord. Therefore, he that resists the power is opposing that which is allowed by God, and they that withstand shall receive to themselves judgment. Okay, during Gnosticism, we have to obey God and allow God to choose the rulers over, Gnostic rulers. He does have a plan. Again, it may be that some evil Gnostic leader will be president again after Trump against a balance out the 40-year 
warfare between Gnosticism and our subjective truth of men versus objective truth of God. But the subjective truth of men, it has to be balanced out. You don't have one dominant world power. Actually, one will come to the top. We don't know who, and that would be the last, the Battle of Armageddon, probably the second Battle of Armageddon that will happen in, in maybe 40 years or a little bit after that. For Gnostic rulers are not authorized by God to be a terror to the good works, but to the evil. That's why God allowed Gnostic Rome to destroy Gnostic Jerusalem. They did evil, but the reason God allowed them to be in control was to deal with evil Gnostics. Balance out power. And would you have no fear of the power? Do that which is good, and you shall have praise from the same. For he is a minister of God to you. There is some praise in Gnostic men if you are, are not standing in the way as they deal with other Gnostic men. However, if you get involved in that battle, if you stay on the Gnostic battlefield, you're going to be in trouble. Now, there's another side of that. There'll be from time to time they're going to turn against Christian, but they're going to anyway because they're going to fight against people in their way. Again, just remember we're all as clay in the hands of the Lord, even the evil men like Nero. Nero would die in 68 AD, though he was in part responsible for the Roman army marching toward Jerusalem. Okay, here the Roman army, we don't know who it is, it might be China, we don't know. But here it was a, he is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do that, which is evil, and sin by fighting against God's judgment. For us today, if we try to promote capitalism over socialism, that is that is evil itself. That's Gnosticism. They're all Gnosticism. That is why we needed the Constitution, the checks and balances. You see, all men are going to have, all Gnostic men are going to have their thumbs on the scales of justice. You know, if you build a house on sand, Jesus said that house is going to fall. Really, if you build a house on Gnosticism, it's not going to work. It's, it's all evil. But God has allowed it, and He allowed men to fight against themselves. Really, He allowed us to build houses on sand to, to show us, prove to us it doesn't work. But if you do that which is evil, be afraid, for He bears not the sword in vain. For He is a minister of God, an avenger for wrath to him that does evil. Wherefore, you must needs be in subjection, not only because of the wrath, but also for conscience sake. We will are to obey the governments, not not just because we're fearful of of fighting against them and, and being in that warfare, but also just for our conscience. It's the right thing to do. Again, remember Peter cut off the ears of Malchus. Well don't do that. We don't fight offensively with swords of men. Well, now we can defend ourselves with swords, but we don't harm other people. We don't, we need to get off the battlefield of Gnosticism. We don't fight against people with Gnosticism. We use the sword of the Spirit. That is the rod of iron. And we don't try to harm people. For this cause, pay your personal and property taxes also. For they are ministers to God's service, attending continually upon this very thing. And so really, don't don't pull the system down. You know, if a demon is cast out of someone and it's not replaced with with righteousness really seven more demons will come in so that's the that's the problem once uh if china was destroyed right now guess what capitalism would would come in and would abound and it would be just as bad this is a this is a balancing of power so we have to pay our taxes and we have to deal with the situation until it's over Render to all their obligation, personal taxes to whom personal taxes are due, customs to who customs are due, fear to who fear, financial obligations to those who claim financial obligations against you. Owe no man anything. But pay off your debts. You know, pay your taxes. Pay off your debts. Get ready for the second age of the kingdom. Owe no, owe no man anything except to love one another. For he that loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. Now we're going to have to learn how to do this. And it may take us 40 years. But we need to learn our neighbor and fulfill the law. What's the, What law? The perfect law of liberty is is the ultimate law that we're talking about. It will be over us in the second age of the kingdom of heaven. There will not be mortgages or need of such things in the second age of the kingdom of heaven. We're going to pay for things with likely with gold, silver, and bitcoin. But again, we have to pay them off. We have to get ready for the second age of the kingdom for this. And, and for the second age of the kingdom of heaven, especially all these things will apply to that. You shall not commit adultery. There's, 
if we're in the kingdom, we're not going to commit adultery. The consequences, cost is going to be too high. We're not going to harm ourselves like that. And you shall not kill. Why, if you're, if you're in the kingdom, you're going to love your neighbors yourself. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is summed up in this word, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love works not ill to his neighbor. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. Again, we're talking about the rod of iron, about the Bible that's completed from God. Perfect law of liberty. What is the perfect law of liberty? It's liberty, freedom from every wind of doctrine of end. And this, knowing the season, that already it is time for you to awake out of sleep. For now is salvation. Again, salvation comes to us in the one faith system from God. And so salvation has been brought down again from heaven for the second, will be for the second age of the kingdom of heaven. For now salvation is nearer to us than when we first believed. The night is far spent. For us now, all the 6,000 years of Gnosticism is almost completely over. And the day, now remember that 1,000 years for man is as one day to the Lord. That's a key for the kingdom of heaven. And the day, the 1,000 year reign of Christ, the day of the Lord. The two ages of the kingdom, Ephesians 2, 6, and 7, is at hand. Remember Hebrews 10, 25, as you see the day approaching, that's the kingdom of heaven in the first century. Not as far spent, now we see the day approaching, the second age of the kingdom of heaven. It's at hand. Again, it may be 40 years. There's great joy in being able to fight for freedom knowing that we're going to win. It's at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. That is Gnosticism. Respect the person. We were in times of ignorance. We couldn't help but be in Gnosticism. But now it's time to wake up. Wake up out of our slumber. And let us pull, put on the armor of light. Objective truth of God rather than subjective truth of men. Gnosticism. The wisdom from above. The whole armor of God. Objective truth versus subjective truth. The rod of iron rather than denominational Bibles. The gospel of the kingdom and not the gospels of men. Galatians 1, 6 through 10. Let us walk becomingly as in the day. Not in writing and in drunkenness, not in cohabitation and lustful acts, not in strife and envy. We're all going to sin still in the kingdom, but we, but we will need to learn how to confess all sin or say the same thing about it that Christ does. For example, it's sin to commit adultery in your heart, but just confess that fault. Admit it. Admit that it'll harm you. And it's really, that's the only way to deal with such things. So we first have to admit them and not commit blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. If we say it's not a sin, well, we're just going to be in trouble and we'll get in worse and worse trouble. But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ, the full armor of God, every word of the rod of iron, it'll protect us from evil. Acts 2, 19 through 21. And don't make provisions for the flesh. Don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Don't even tempt yourself in this. Admit sin is sin. Going against the rod of iron is sin. Just admit that, and you're halfway there. That's what we have to learn. What is sin in the kingdom of heaven? Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Don't change God's law. Don't, don't change the meaning of the words of the Bible. So don't leave any of the armor off. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. will always keep a door open for the doctrine of men. Romans chapter 14. Christian warfare is about showing the world what righteousness is. But as we teach, we must not harm the weak in faith. Romans chapter 14. The accepting of those weak in the faith. You see, when the Lord hid his face from humanity, he hid his power, glory, and majesty. So we had no choice but to be weak in faith. And we did not have the perfect law of liberty, the rod of iron of Christ. But we're going to learn it now at a different pace. Matthew chapter 20. Some will come in different hours of the day. So don't argue with those people about their lack of knowledge. Again, we will be reading the Bible home. We'll be at different degrees of learning, but we will all be covering the same material weekly. But when we gather together for worship, it's not a time then for arguing. One man has faith to eat all things. So some Jewish Christians, of course, they couldn't eat pork or they didn't believe it was right to eat pork. Or things and and also there were vegetarians in those times as well and also there was a problem with with uh, meat sold at markets meat that was sacrificed to idols and that Christians could get cheaply and so people had problems knowing what to do regarding the eating of meat 
but they had to grow in faith. He that is weak in faith, the new convert who was poor in spirit, he didn't understand which of these things are right. We are not to discourage him. He eats herbs only. It would be like a vegetarian, right? Let not him that eats look down upon him that cannot eat. And let not him that does not eat condemn he that eats, for God has received him. So so the point is, the Lord doesn't care if you're vegetarian or not. He doesn't care if you eat meat sacrificed to idols as long as your attitude is right toward it. He doesn't care if you eat pork as long as you don't sin. And so Christians don't need to sit around arguing things like this among each other. Let not him that eats look down upon him that cannot eat, and let not him that does not eat condemn he that eats, for God has received him. None of it's sin. Who are you that judges a servant of another? To his own Lord he stands or falls. You see, Gnosticism, when men could not guide his own moral standards, he men did rule over men when they couldn't even didn't even know about their own moral standards. We need God. We need a perfect moral standard from God. We can't judge each other. We can't get the splinter out of somebody else's eye when we have a beam in our eye. For example, we might know about meat. But we may not know about something else more critical. We can't go around condemning people. We couldn't, especially in our ignorance. And we all are going to be ignorant until the second age of the kingdom. We're going to be studying and working on these matters together. First Corinthians thirteen nine through 12. We know in part, but when that which is perfect comes, or when the second age of the kingdom of heaven comes, when the rod of iron is completed, it's restored, then that which is in part shall be done away with. Who are you that judges the servant of another? To his own Lord he stands or falls. Yes, he will be made to stand, for the Lord has the power to make him stand. We are as clay in the hands of the Master, aren't we? One man esteem one day above another, another esteem every day. Let each man be fully assured in his own mind, he that regards a day regards it unto the Lord. So this is probably talking about the days of the Jewish, uh, days that the Jews came to worship. And uh, of course, we don't observe them now, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter uh, you know, if if we do that as Christians, it wouldn't really matter in the sense that none of that would be sinful activity. Or, you know, some people believe that Sunday is a special day of worship. Well, you know, any day is a good day to worship God. Any day is special. Or some people might think about birthdays. You know, can you celebrate birthdays and different holidays? And probably not be calling them holy days. But can you observe these? Some days are special over other days. Well, you can as long as you don't violate your conscience. Our Lord doesn't care if you esteem one day above another. One man esteem one day above another, another esteem every day. Let each man be fully assured in his own mind. Don't violate your conscience. He that regards a day regards it unto the Lord. And he that eats, eats unto the Lord. For he gives God thanks, and he eats not. Unto the Lord he eats not, and gives thanks. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. So we live... Especially as, as Christianity, one faith Christianity, there's going to be billions of people in it. And we have to work with each other. None of us live to ourselves and die to ourselves. So none of us have all the answers in those, in that regard. That's why we contend for the faith together. But we don't contend for the faith in such ways to discourage those that don't understand some matters yet. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. But you, why do you judge your brother? Or... You again, why do you look down on your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, to me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each one of us shall give account of himself to God. Now in denominationalism, we kind of leaned on some men. We hoped some men were smarter than us, that they could give us answers in this regard, in regard to these matters. But we're not in Gnosticism. We're not going to be in Gnosticism. We're trying to get out of Gnosticism. We're trying to get out of being respective persons. So each man has to learn these things for himself. And by the way, spiritual matters will be a lot simpler in the kingdom of heaven. Just consider Adam and Eve in the garden. You just need to know what God said and not do what God said not to do. It's that simple. Sin is missing the mark of not following what God said. God wants us to do what he says to do because that will protect us and bless us exceedingly because he loves us. He doesn't want us to sin and harm ourselves. So it's really going to be a pretty simple matter as we get back spiritually speaking. But we don't need... Okay, consider Satan. He was a man, and we we can find that out in the, in the rod of iron. But notice that he preached 
that no, it was okay. Be the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Remember, he preached exactly opposite what God preached. That's denominational preaching. That's preaching man's opinion over God's opinion. Well, you, you can't do that. We can't do that any longer. We have to prepare for the second age of the kingdom of heaven. But you, why do you judge your brother? Or you again, why do you look down on your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, to me every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each one of us shall give an account to himself, to God. Christ will be the only mediator between God and men. Let us not, therefore, judge one another. We may have thought we needed someone to help us make judgments in denominationalism. And I guess maybe in a sense we did. I, you know, it may be that God had different preachers understand different things because not any preacher understood the Bible. But maybe different preachers had different specialities. Right? And maybe that's how God worked with me, and at least we got some of God's Word in that way. But it's not going to be like that at all in the kingdom of God. And so we have to prepare to determine these things ourselves. We'll, we will understand the rod of iron. It's not going to be difficult. God doesn't want men standing between Him and God. It's only confuses things. It only causes harm. For if because of meat your brother is grieved, you walk no longer in love. Destroy not with your meat him for whom Christ died. Let not your good be evil spoken of, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. You know, don't get on a hobby horse and stay there. It's just going to cause a problem. If somebody understands something that you're talking about, we all are studying the same scripture, somebody can't quite get it, don't belittle them. They're weak in faith. You'll come around next year and you'll cover the same subject and they'll have background on it. And they'll probably understand it. And then, of course, there are going to be new converts through the year. And it be starting all over with them as well. Every knee will bow to Christ in the kingdom of heaven. Every knee. Not just preachers. Not just elders. Not just leaders. Every knee will bow. And again, also the unrighteous are going to be as clay in his hands as well, aren't they? So then let us, I mean, they have been all along. They just haven't bowed. They haven't been forced to bow. So then let us follow things which make for peace and things whereby we may edify one another. Again, remember, it's going to take us time to learn things. You can't be critical of someone who's not learning things the same way in the same time as you are. Again, we come in at different hours of the day. Remember Matthew chapter 20, and God gives us all the same reward, a dime for a day's work, whether it's the last hour of the day or whether we've been there all day long. Do not destroy God's work for meat's sake. Don't let me be your hobby horse or let days be your hobby horse. All things indeed are clean. How be it? It is evil for that man who eats with offense. So if it violates your conscience, whatever you do, don't do it. Whatever we do in word or deed, we need to do all. We need to do it in the name of the Lord with his authority. What if you can't find his authority? Well, if you think maybe he doesn't give you authority, don't do it. All things indeed are clean. How be it? It is evil for that man who eats with offense. It is good not to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor to do anything whereby your brother stumbles. The faith which you have, have you to yourself before God. Happy is he that judges not himself in that which he approves. But he that doubts is condemned if he eats, because he eats not of faith. And whatever is not of faith is a sin. So we will be able to find authority for everything we do as we prepare for the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God, if, you know, if, if we have time. Some will not figure things out and be like the five foolish virgins. But anyway, those of us that will have time and who start out early enough and, and who are committed to this task, we need to work on these matters as they come along. And if some can't understand, again, as we said before, we'll go through the same material a year from now. And you'll have some background on it because you'll have studied through the rest of the Bible. And then we're going to get it. It's not going to be hard. All we need to understand is what God approves and what He doesn't approve of. What he says is sin. What he says harms you. That's what we have to identify. And again, with new converts, we'll start all over. Remember, they're weak in the faith. Just like we all are. We didn't have a choice. But they're going to be weaker in faith because they haven't studied the rod of iron, hadn't contended for the faith at all yet. And we just have to be careful and gentle with new converts then. Romans chapter 15. Because the rod of iron, that is the Bible from God, is being restored respect of persons is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit or against the rod of iron. 
racism is defined by the Lord as spiritual warfare against him. Now we that are strong in faith, who are better able to understand the power, majesty, and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ought to bear the weaknesses of those not and to please ourselves. There's no bragging rights about being given wisdom from above. No more respect of persons is allowed. Let each of us please his neighbor for that which is good unto edifying. For Christ also pleased not himself. If anyone had a right to brag, it would have been Christ. But all men are created equal. There is God and there is men. Now that we are restoring the perfect law of liberty. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach you fell upon me. There are people in this world who think they're better than you. And there are people in the world there are people in this world who think they're better than you, but amazingly there were people in Jesus' day who thought they were better than him. And of course there are people today who think they're better than Jesus. And these people will hate you for claiming that Christ has all authority and trying to take away their right to be respecter of person. To our text again. For whatever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that through patience and through the comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. Now, we had to patiently endure the apostasy, the 1600 years of apostasy, or at least our time in it. Remember, though, the New Testament is dual prophecy. It was for first century Christians or first century people, and it applies the same now to modern man. It is an opportunity for modern men to have freedom from every wind of doctrine of men. Now, the God of patience and of comfort grants you to be of the same mind one with another according to Christ Jesus. We'll be all the same faith system. We'll all have the same doctrine as we contend for the same faith and we prepare for the same kingdom, the second age of the kingdom of God. That with one accord you may with one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will be sanctified and He will be glorified. For us in the second age of the kingdom, Leviticus 10, verse 3. Wherefore, receive you one another, all the poor in spirit, converted out of Gnostic apostasy, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3, all denominationalists, socialists, atheists, receive one another, even as Christ also received you to the glory of God. For I say that Christ has been made a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, that he might confirm the promises given unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, Psalms eighteen forty nine. Therefore will I give praise unto you among the Gentiles, and sing unto your name. And again he said, Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah said in Isaiah 11, verse 10, There shall be the root of Jesse, and he that rises to rule over the Gentiles, on him shall the Gentiles hope. Now the God of hope fills you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. For us, this means the rod of iron, the perfect law of liberty. It's going to free us from every wind of the doctrine of men in about 40 years in the second age of the kingdom of heaven. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, the Gentile Christians at Rome, Paul was talking about, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. But I write the more boldly unto you in some measure as putting you again in remembrance because of the grace that was given me of God that I should be a minister of Christ Jesus unto the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of the kingdom of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be made acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 10 and 11, the gift of the Holy Spirit was proof to the Jews, the Gentiles were accepted by God. Modern man, or modern Gentiles' proof is that we can now restore and understand the Bible from God. Perfect law of liberty. Now, after 1,680 years, that the Lord God Almighty has controlled what we can think about for the past 1,680 years. Our proof is that we are and always have been clay in the hands of our Creator. 
and he is no longer hiding his face from us. Ezekiel 39, 25 through 29. If he is now allowing you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, consider Matthew 13, verse 11, then you know that he allows salvation for you. The Holy Spirit continues through Paul. I have therefore my glory in Christ Jesus in things pertaining to God. For I will not dare to speak of anything save those which Christ wrought through me. The Lord is now the only mediator between God and man. He's the only preacher. But qualified Christians will be allowed to teach James 3.13 and following. Even believers who are not yet Christians have the authority to contend for the faith and have a limited commission to take the rod of iron to the world. Remember the Lord answered Cornelius's prayer giving him wisdom from above? Well, the Lord will do that to believers today, even before we're Christians. Want to join us? The rod of iron.org. The Holy Spirit through Paul again said, I have therefore my glory in Christ Jesus and things pertaining to God. For I will not dare to speak anything save those which Christ wrought through me for the obedience of the Gentiles by word and deed in the power of signs and wonders in the power of the Holy Spirit so that from Jerusalem and round about even at Illyricum I have fully taught the gospel of Christ. Yes, making it my aim so to teach the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, not where Christ was already named, that I might not build upon another man's foundation, but as it is written, Isaiah 52, 15, they shall see to whom no tidings of him came, and they who have not heard shall understand. Wherefore also, again, Holy Spirit through Paul speaking, Wherefore also I was hindered these many times from coming to you, but now having no more any place in these regions, and having these many years a longing to come unto you, whenever I go unto Spain, for I hope to see you in my journey, and to be brought on my way thitherward by you, if first in some measure I shall have been sanctified with your company. So whenever I go to Spain, back to our text, but now I say I go to Jerusalem, ministering unto the saints. For it has been the good pleasure of Macedonia and Achaia to make certain contributions for the poor among the saints that are at Jerusalem. Yes, it has been their good pleasure, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, they owe it to them also to minister unto them in carnal things. Then therefore I have accomplished this, and have sealed to them this fruit. I will go on by you into Spain. And I know that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. He would be able to lay his hands on those that needed it and teach. And they would receive all of the wisdom from above that was available at that time. Remember, the wisdom from above was given through 40 year time. And not all at once so that evil could, could still maintain a fight against good. Back to the text in closing here in Romans chapter 15. Now I beseech you, brethren, by our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from them that are disobedient in Judea, and that my ministration which I have for Jerusalem may be acceptable unto the saints. Now remember, he was delivered from the Jews, even though he did end up in Rome. He continued, The Holy Spirit continues through Paul, that I may come unto you in joy, through the will of God, and together with you find rest. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Romans chapter 16. All of the soldiers in the Lord's army are equally important. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the assembly that is in Centuria, that you receive her in the Lord worthily of the saints, and that you assist her in whatever matter she may have need of you. For she herself also has been a helper of many and of mine own self. Salute Priscilla and Aquila, my workers in Christ Jesus, who for my life laid down their own necks, and to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the assemblies of the Gentiles. And salute the assembly that is in their house. Salute 
Epahinetus, my beloved, who is the first fruit of Asia unto Christ, salute Mary, who bestowed much labor on you. Salute Andronicus, the man of victory, from Junius, my kinsman and my fellow prisoner, who are of note among the apostles, who also have been in Christ before me. Salute Ampilus, my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ. And Stachius, my beloved. Salute Ampilius, the approved in Christ. Salute them that are of the household of Aristobulus. Salute Herodion, my kinsman. Salute them of the household of Narcissus that are in the Lord. Salute Tripena and Triposa who labor in the Lord. Salute Persis, my beloved, who labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, the chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Salute Asogritos, Philigon, Hermes, Petrobas, Hermes, and the brethren that are with him. Salute Philologos, and Julia, Nereos, and his sisters, Olympus, and all the saints that are with him. Salute one another with a holy kiss. All the assemblies of Christ salute you. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them that are causing divisions and occasions of stumbling, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and turn away from them. You see, now we can easily identify evil Gnostics today since we're coming out of the matrix, spiritual dark ages. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. For they that are such serve not our Lord Christ, but their own belly. And by their smooth and fair speech, they beguile the hearts of the innocent. Galatians 1, 7, Revelation 2, verse 15. Again, Christ is the preacher. Men cannot any longer, men no longer will be allowed to pervert or give private interpretation of the word of God. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I rejoice therefore over you, but I would have you wise unto that which is good, and simple unto that which is evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Satan is metaphorically speaking wielding his mega sword right now. But that's going to end when we enter into the second age of the kingdom of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, salutes you. Lucius and Jason, Sosipatris, my kinsman. I, Tertius, who write the epistle. In other words, Paul is speaking and he's writing it down. Salute you in the Lord. Gaius, my host, and of the whole church, salute you. Erastus, the treasure of the city, salutes you, and Quartus, the brother, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the message of the mystery which had been kept in silence through times eternal, but now is manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the eternal God, is made known unto all the nations unto obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen.